Hmm. Still, I guess around ten students to come. Till when you had school today? One thirty. Till two ten. Two ten. Two ten. Okay. And what is going on in school? In physics. So dual nature. We are just solving the exercise questions. Okay. Okay, that is in NPS. Other schools, Mehul. In the other class, we started atoms. Atoms, atoms, atoms. We are done. So, like, we just finished first two chapters of electrostatics. That's it. Only that much. Yes, sir. Since our school started one and a half months back, so we've been doing this. Okay, that's. Little bit of lag, okay. You cannot be that much behind with others. Okay, so don't follow the school speed speed of schools. Okay, follow what is going on in symptom because you have to finish the curriculum early so that you could revise in revise the eleventh portions. Okay, and I as I already told you. Within a month or so, our physics at least will get over. So by mid of uh, by end of September, so definitely it will be over. So entire October we'll be doing little bit of revision of eleventh, and uh, when even math and chemistry gets over, math and chemistry will get over. I guess by uh, first week of November. So we have we will have around a more than a month for uh, you know to revise or revisit some chapters of eleventh, and then we'll start the crash course. You know, right? Crash course. What will happen? First week of November. Any idea? No one has any. Idea. Paper I... We will have daily classes. Okay, daily we'll have classes of three to four hours. We will solve only problems then. So Monday to Saturday we'll be doing that, and on Sunday you have to write the test. That is what is planned. That plan could get changed a little bit here and there, but that is what we intend to do. Okay, and uh, where are others? Very few people have joined. Anyways, okay. So uh, you guys know that we are done with dual nature and atoms. And when you might be doing problems on these two chapters, did you encounter questions on X-ray by any chance? Looks like you haven't even started practicing uh, questions from these two chapters. Okay. So X-ray is uh, is an important portion, okay? That is not in your NCERT book. When you solve problems, you will see that the uh, the X-ray uh, chapter will be a uh, lot of questions from X-ray chapter will be there, uh, okay? In previous year, JE question or any other community exam, you take it. For some reason, but X-ray is not there in the NCRT. So, nevertheless, we will cover it. X-ray. So, today's agenda is: we will complete the X-ray uh, topic, then we will start solving questions on these two chapters. All right. And if suppose little bit time remains at the end, then we'll be like what we do. Then we'll take up some mechanics questions. Okay. So I have set of those questions also. All right. So all of you write down X-ray. So, so we won't be starting nuclei today. No. You have seen the reminder in the group. I thought nuclei was written. Maybe I have confused. Yeah. Nuclei was written. Okay. Okay. Let's see. But before nuclei, many other things were written. So let's complete that first. Uh, are you in a hurry to finish? No, sir. Just asking. We are anyway very far ahead in physics. Okay, so 
let's see if only little bit time is remaining then no point starting a new chapter let's say only half an hour remains then why should we start a new chapter so let's see okay so write down x-ray so uh, x-ray uh, you might be knowing little bit about the x-ray the discovery of x-ray who has done the discovery of x-ray know it no William Rongton was doing some experiment. He uh, he was he was into the experiments related to cathode ray. William Rongton. Cathode ray is nothing but the electrons uh, passing through an evacuated tube. So he was he doing his usual experiments, and uh, uh, one day what he did was that he coated. The evacuated tube with some metallic uh, powder or something, and after the cathode ray got switched, huh, after the cathode ray got switched off, then also he observed that some sort of glow is coming out. Okay, and uh, he concluded by some calculations that this is some sort of electromagnetic wave. Okay, and during that time when uh, the discovery of photons came in and uh, electromagnetic wave was a very new phenomena everybody was uh, you know very much uh, interested in uh, you know identifying these em waves so when radio waves were discovered then the uh, people got to know that even the visible light is an electromagnetic wave so different different types of waves were coming up the people were aware that ultraviolet waves can be utilized to kill the germs then uh, you know every new discovery of em wave come they will be looking as if it can be used for something uh, you know which is of importance to them so x ray came up and then a little bit of analysis was done so before uh, you know be before the further analysis of the x ray uh, William Rongton and Bragg, they already used X-ray to study the uh, the crystal lattice. So Bragg's word, you, Bragg's uh, name, you might have heard in chemistry in the solid state. So there is a Bragg law also there. So these guys did some study of the crystal lattice and they got Nobel Prize for it. But they never, uh, you know, very uh, systematically studied the X-ray. It was a Coolidge who discovered the Coolidge tube, which was used for careful study of what is X-ray and how it can be uh, further analyzed. All right. And when the uh, discovery of X-ray happened and it was found out that uh, the X-rays can be absorbed by the calcium, which is uh, prominently present in our uh, bones. Okay. So then it uh, this news spread like a fire within an year um, this news got spread in entire world so during that point in time there was no communication device uh, as such you no know, which could communicate one part of the world to the other but then also this news spread so fast and that point in time you know there was this um, a lot of gang war used to happen and um, so it has its own importance in that era so the x-ray was utilized to look at the gunshots bone fractures and of course kidney stones solid objects so all of this were uh, uh, i mean uh, within a year itself within a year of discovery of x-ray all of these were started so x-ray was uh, x-ray has its own importance in our day-to-day -day life and it, it is still used so i i'm sure you many of you might have already uh, you know done x-ray some point of your life right so only lucky few ex escapes any bone fracture most of the time at least once in your life you'll have bone fracture <laughs> anyways so uh, coolidge was the one who uh, who has carefully designed an apparatus to study the x-ray okay so let us first design or let us see what is the design of the coolidge tube and then we will get into uh, further uh, aspects of the discovery and the analysis of the x-ray okay 
So let me first draw a little bit of it. I'll let you know when you can start drawing and then you can copy because I'll be erasing some things before you start drawing. So do you had a bone fracture like some point in your life already? Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, so many, so many no's. Okay, that's rare. Oh, you are pretty young also. And you don't take that much risk. During our time, there, there was no uh, mobile phone as such. So we have to go out to play. But then you can play on the mobile phone now. And when you play outside, a lot of accidents happen. You can start drawing, all of you. Hmm. All right. Can anyone identify what it is which I have just drawn? Any guesses? So transform? No. Any other guesses? Anyone? Cathode ray tube. It is an electron gun. Okay, yes, cathode ray tube, you can say. Fine, so it is an electron gun which I have drawn. This we have used in uh, the, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, the, there was this- Germer experiment. Germer, Dev, Germer Davison experiment, okay? There we have used it. So I have not drawn complicated uh, electron gun, but it is an electron gun, okay? And then there is a cylindrical coating this entire thing is made up of uh, glass and then there is a coating like this, this yellow thing. This is some metal coating. You can take any metal, but uh, they had chosen molybdenum coating you can use anything copper also it is fine okay then uh, you have uh, one more big element over here sorry yeah it is fine this Okay, this entire thing is made up of copper. This blue structure, it is made up of copper. Okay, and at the tip of it over here, this is a molybdenum coating. This red thing, it's a coating.
fine so this is lt means lower tension the the battery has lesser potential so there has to be high tension somewhere it is a relative term so the high tension battery is over here you had this molybdenum cylindrical coating that and this copper these two things in between them there is a potential difference okay molybdenum coating is having negative potential and just to show that it is high potential we are connecting three batteries like this okay so this is high tension let's say potential is v all right now electron beam will be produced by this uh, tungsten filament this is tungsten it will get heated up and it will emit electron this is called thermionic emission we have learned about it right so the electron will absorb a lot of heat heat energy and will come out it will generate a lot of electrons and what will happen is that this molybdenum coating which has negative potential it will ripple the electron beam from all the uh, sides it is a circular cross section so there is no escaping for it so it can't go up or down so what happens it happens is that the beam which gets produced converges into a narrow beam like this okay and then it hits the uh, molybdenum coating which is in front of it like this these are the electron beam that is created okay and then from when the electron beam hits it is observed that em wave is generated okay the em wave that is generated like this you can pass this em wave through the uh, through a very uh, let's say a very thin aluminum sheet so that lesser energy photons are not able to cross it only higher energy will pass through it so it will be like a filter so high frequency will come out of it and we call it as x ray the filter is not shown here and you need not know also just that i am telling you so x ray is generated like this okay now uh, we have to get into the details of what is happening and why x ray is getting generated over here so this is what we have observed now first question uh, which you can answer right now itself is why it is made up of copper this thing this blue portion why it is made up of copper no one no one has answer so you don't want any resistance because you want that battery's voltage to be really high ah uh, no copper gives thing that x ray is made up of <laughs> x ray is created by the molybdenum coating not by the copper okay so why i do not i should not be having entire thing made up of molybdenum or any other metal because the copper has a very good thermal conductivity copper can take heat away efficiently okay what happens is that 
of the energy of these electrons which are hitting the molybdenum coating it goes as heat okay 99% energy it converts into heat and only 1% is converted into x ray it's it's not a very efficient process generating x ray because photons uh, you know it will be very uh, it the molybdenum coating will be very selective about which energy of the electron to absorb which one to reject and it has to you know transfer it effectively so these electron which are coming from electron gun it collides it generates lot of heat which should be taken away otherwise the metal will start melting and even though you made up with copper you know what will happen is that slowly and slowly the uh, the glass uh, on the glass molybdenum will get deposited and then uh, there you could start seeing the spark uh, very early between molybdenum and the glass itself so slowly and slowly it anyway decays you want to make sure that it has a longer life so you want to cool it down quickly so you can as well you know throw water in it you can throw some water on this copper rod which could take heat away from it so cooling is another very important aspect of it fine that's why it is made up of copper right so let let us watch a small uh, this thing a video of uh, of this experiment so that it is little bit more clear i don't want any confusion related to it so hmm so so like today also we use the same kind of setup in normal x rays see today's x ray i haven't studied actually how oh. it exactly it is created but definitely there will be a cathode ray and there will be a metal on which the electron should hit okay that will be there but whether it is coolidge tube or any other advanced mechanism i haven't checked that okay, okay. all right so the x rays when they produce is that a uh, thing instantaneous like as soon as the electron hits it gets released we'll discuss that but first let okay. us see let's understand the observation part of it conclusion and why it happens we'll study okay all of you listen to this video everyone production of x rays the lamp that is shown here was designed by coolidge and hence it is called coolidge 2 it contains a highly evacuated glass bulb containing a cathode which is a tungsten filament and anode which is a target made up of a metal of high atomic weight the pressure inside the bulb is maintained at 10 to the minus 6 mm mercury when the cathode is heated by passing a current through it from a low tension battery it emits electrons the filament is surrounded by a molybdenum cylinder which is kept at negative potential to the filament this repels the electrons further and hence the electrons form a fine pencil beam at the center of the cylinder this pencil beam is also accelerated by the cylinder towards the target is made up of a copper block on which a piece of molybdenum is fixed high thermal conductivity is used to carry away the heat generated to the cooling setup the target is also titled to an angle of 45 degrees causing the electrons to heat at an angle this produces x rays almost perpendicular to the electron beam a very high potential of 20 kV is applied between the source and the target due to the high potential difference the electrons are accelerated towards the anode and it hits the metal when it hits the kinetic energy is transferred to produce x rays the intensity of x rays depends on the number of electrons striking the metal target so if we can increase by increasing the current through the filament then we can increase the intensity of x rays so uh, one last point which the uh, oh, what was that other machine that was like pumping something else is that it was water it is just pumping shower like stuff just pumping water nothing else okay 
was used to cool. Hello? Yes, sir. Got it. Huh, so one last thing that uh, this guy mentioned was that the intensity of the X-ray depends on number of electrons hitting this molybdenum coating. Okay, And that makes sense because one electron can generate only one photon. Fine. So if you want to increase the intensity of X-ray, which is number of photons, you have to increase the number of electrons. So that is what... Uh, was claimed and then he has all also mentioned that this coating should be of higher atomic number okay we will we will see why it is required when we will study it mathematically okay so let us see what is causing the x-ray to get emitted when the electrons are hitting the molybdenum coating what exactly happens now we are getting into the reasoning part of it fine so Molybdenum is, of course, a very high atomic uh, number atom. So we will be drawing a representative, uh, you know, atom for the molybdenum. So it will have multiple shells. So let me draw all that. All of you draw with me. Let's say it has a K shell. And let's say this is L. another one okay i've just drawn three so k l m we want to draw this so i'm just drawing the electrons there can be multiple electrons so i'm just drawing few of them as a representation sake nothing else so this is the atom of the molybdenum and when electron from outside the electron gun when it is targeting the electron is interacting with the atom of the molybdenum only so let us see exactly what happens when electron comes near this atom so what happens that okay what happens that one electron, let's say this is an electron. This electron is targeted inside the molybdenum. So this electron will travel and will most of the electron will miss the target as in target as in they will not uh, touch a single electron or the nucleus. They will just go like this. Okay. But what will happen in this process is that just because they are not touching any electron or the nucleus doesn't mean that they are not interacting. There is electrostatic force that is there. So what will happen is that initial kinetic energy, is, let's say K1, final kinetic energy could decrease, let's say K2. Okay, so if energy is decreased, K2 is less than K1, what will happen to the balance of the energy? That is K1 minus K2. What do you think? electron came so, with so kinetic energy K1, its kinetic energy becomes K2. It has decreased. The balance yes. of energy, where it goes? It goes into some other electron. No, so it is not touching it any... It will go into the X-ray. It will create a photon of H mu. Okay? So, an EM wave will get generated because... You know, these electron, as long as they are orbiting in a stable orbit, they will have fixed velocities. Their orbiting electrons, kinetic energy won't change. Nothing will happen. Only the K1 minus K2 has to release. And that only way to release is by releasing a photon. So K1 minus K2 will release a photon of energy H mu. Okay. Now, if K1 is fixed, K1 is fixed. How many values of K2 can exist? K2 can be how many? K2 can have how many values? So anything, right? Like infinite values. Infinite. Infinite values. St okay, starting from 0 
to K1 itself. Infinite. So this creates a continuous spectrum of frequency. All of you able to understand? Continuous spectrum of frequency will be emitted. So starting from the maximum possible frequency to minimum possible frequency, everything will get emitted. Now, can you tell me what is the uh, what is the minimum? Sorry, what is the maximum possible frequency? How will you get the maximum possible frequency? So K two is zero. K two is zero. So K one will be equal to H into mu max, right? So K one can be written as H C by I can say lambda threshold. Lambda will be minimum, so I'm calling it as threshold. When it is minimum, we call it like a threshold, like this. Now, what is K1? Can you find K1? Look at the diagram which you have drawn here. What will be the kinetic energy of electron? Can you tell me? So EMV. So EV. How much? EV. EV. You can see electron is accelerated from this potential to that potential. The potential difference between the molybdenum coating and the copper is V. So the energy is EV. Fine. So K1 is E into V. So equating this, you will get the maximum possible frequency or minimum possible wavelength. So does it depend on what is the material over here as in whether it is molybdenum coating here or some other steel is there iron is there does it matter to the min, uh, to the maximum possible frequency so it depends on land, lambda threshold right? it doesn't matter right because it depends on the kinetic energy the entire kinetic energy when it gets converted into the photon that will emit the maximum frequency. So this particular thing doesn't depend on the material. So this uh, is independent of the material or independent of this atom itself through which the electron is passing the maximum possible frequency. But uh, apart from this, once in a while, electron, the, let's call it as outside electron. This outside electron once in a while can knock off an orbital electron suppose it knocks off this electron this electron it knocks off and because of which there is a vacancy here so what will happen now anyone if there is a vacancy there what will happen the kinetic energy you get transferred see i am interested only in the photon em wave let's not talk about the uh, you know energy transfer here tell me how photons will be generated now if electron is knocked off from k shell after that what will happen suppose it get knocked off after that will enter some other shell so will this electron have intense incentive to jump from l to k can it do that Yes, sir. Which energy is higher? Energy of K shell or L shell? L shell. L is higher. So definitely it is an incentivized thing because everything in this universe wants to decrease their decrease their energy. So that's why from L it will be readily be, you know, it will be ready to jump to the K. So if electron gets knocked off from K, electron will jump from L to K. Okay, and when electron jumps from L to K, uh, let me write it down. Electron from L or higher shell Param, why are you not writing advanced test? You are preparing only for mains? jump from mm, so i didn't study enough for that one and i yeah i spent like my entire 
I'm studying for the UK. No, then you are then you are cut out for advance if you are if you have these kind of excuses. Okay. You have to find time. Everybody else, those who have written, they have got time. Only you did not get the time. How is that possible? Okay. Electron from L or higher shell can jump to K. K shell. Okay. Now this jumping of higher shell to K shell when it jumps energy of the electron is decreased when it goes from l to k and that difference in energy gets emitted as an uh, emitted as a photon of high energy which is of x ray radiation x ray frequency okay so let's say energy of l minus energy of k when electron is jumping from l to k will generate a frequency which is of x ray this is called k alpha radiation if you are jumping from m to k these are the names that's all this radiation this frequency when it comes out it is called k beta radiation okay now coming back to the point why the atomic number of the material should be high because then only the difference in L and K will be very high. Difference in the two levels should be very high. And you know, energies, energy of a particular level is proportional to atomic number square sort of thing, right? 13.6 by uh, N square into Z square. So if it is a heavier mass, then the difference in energy levels will be high. So when electron jumps from uh, L to K, higher frequency will get emitted so that is the reason why okay anyone has any doubt so in the beginning why did you assume that kinetic energy increases where i have assumed kinetic energy increases it decreases sorry for us we already we said that k2 is less than k1 like what would happen if k2 becomes more how k2 will become more no no there is no chance it can become more Tell me why it will become more. So, but it's just interaction, right? So interaction can produce okay. like positive or negative. Right? So, okay. If K2 increases, the energy of the electrons in the atom should decrease. Yes. Right? And if energy of the electron decreases, its velocity should decrease. And if velocity decreases, it is basically changing the orbitals. But that is not happening. We are not assuming electrons getting knocked off. Okay, sir. Yes. So in the second, so in the second case, when the the outside, what happens to the outside electron? Outside electron will create continuous spectrum. I mean, that is anyway there. Whatever kind of energy it will come out, that frequency will anyway get emitted. But apart from that, this also is there. Oh, okay. okay. Now this frequency, do you think it depends on the outside electrons' energy? final initial or it is independent of that this frequency that get emitted what do you think so it's only depending on e l and e k so it doesn't depend on k1 k2. correct it doesn't depend on the outside electrons kinetic energy it only depends on the shells individual energies so can i say that this frequency depends on what material I am using to generate X-ray, right? I can say that. So this frequency is sort of a characteristic of the material which I'm using. So this X-ray which gets generated when electron gets knocked off, this X-ray is called characteristic X-ray, okay? And this X-ray is called continuous X-ray, okay? Both are X-ray only, but this one is called continuous X-ray which doesn't depend on the uh, material. It only depends on the kinetic energy of the electron before and after. This one is characteristic X-ray, which depends on the shell's energy. So if you draw a graph of, uh, okay, before drawing a graph, I'll just quickly summarize this. K alpha is basically L to K. 
from compter number two to one. Okay. Rajdeep, any doubt? No, sir. K beta is from M to K. N equal to three to one. Okay, these are these are K alpha K beta. Similarly, you will have L alpha L beta. So, what do you think L alpha will be? From where to where? From M to L. M to L, and this will be. N to L. N to L. Okay, so rather than using KLM, it will be better if we start using the principal Compton number from three to two. And this one is from n equal to four to two. Okay, but then in our study, uh, most of the time we'll be talking about k alpha and k beta. We are not worried about these, but then sometimes this could also come in at max l alpha will come in. Okay, but we should be knowing that l beta is also exist. Hmm. So. Uh, if you draw a graph, now we can talk about a graph. If you draw a graph where on the x axis, this is the wavelength and on the y axis is let's say uh, the number of photons that are coming number of photons of the uh, x ray that could come out. Okay or you can say intensity of the photons that are coming out for the x-ray. You're talking about that on the y-axis. So if you draw the graph, now uh, tell me, will there be a lambda minimum? We have found out, right? There will be a lambda minimum for maximum frequency. For this one, if you equate, you'll get a lambda threshold. Lesser than that wavelength is not possible. Okay, so the kind of graph you see is this. This kind of graph you see. Now, what can you make it make out of it? What does these two peaks represent? Any guesses? K alpha, K beta. Correct. So they are the aberration to the continuous spectrum which you are getting. The, the way they are produced is different from the way continuous spectrum is produced. So that's why in the graph also it is clearly seen. This is the continuous X-ray which you get. So the wavelength, there is a lambda threshold over here. Okay. So, hmm. so, so like uh, this characteristic will be only produced at these points, even continuous is being produced at the same points. Yes, yes, oh. there can be, why not? Okay. So, but like this characteristic thing, why, why does that even need these electrons? Because in that, in the characteristic, you're losing energy. So, and here the electron is losing energy. So shouldn't it become more different? It doesn't need it. It is it just is. like the electron should be knocked off and you need an external electron to knock it off. It will hit the K shell K shell electron goes away and then only transition will happen once there is a vacancy. Otherwise, why transitioning will happen? Okay. All right. So now uh, for for the contents spectrum, we, we have a ready-made equation, which is K1 minus K2 is equal to H mu and I can say that K1 is equal to H C by lambda threshold, which is equal to E times V. So for the continuous spectrum, no problem. But for the uh, characteristic X-ray, there has to be some formula. And that formula looks very, very similar to the uh, Lyman, Balmer and all those series which we have learned already. We have learned for the uh, for the hydrogen like atom we have learned but definitely it is not a hydrogen like atom there are multiple 
electrons in the orbit okay because of which the atomic number will get screened away and there is a screening factor also do you know what is a screening effect have you heard of it no sir others no sir are screening effect nahi pada bhai tum okay you remind gorav about it okay screening effect so we we have done screening effect what it is please so, so those those numbers uh, 0.3 something what 3 something so basically something like shielding effect or something ah like a shielding effect i you did it last year poor shielding of dnf electrons and all that yes sir, yes so oh, yes, the the <laughs> outer shell electrons were not uh, the outer shell electrons they are not very uh, it is not very easy for them to interact with the nucleus because they get shielded away by the other electrons so the atomic number behaves as if number of protons inside the nucleus behave as if it is lesser than what it is actually due to the shielding of the uh, the the inner shell electrons and hence the effective atomic number is decreased and that atomic number can be written as z minus b okay b is the screening constant right down b is the screening constant so i'll just tell you the values of uh, the screening factor for k alpha the screening constant b is 1 okay and you can use it for k beta also it is very similar the values of k alpha and k beta b is 1 for l alpha the value of b is 7.4 which is hardly used now you can keep it okay okay this is the formula for the characteristic x ray if you have to find the wavelength of it okay hmm now let us work around and see what we can do further with this formula 1 by lambda is z minus b whole square rigbuck constant 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square n1 and n2 are the compton number uh, between which the transitioning is happening okay c by lambda is your frequency which is equal to c z minus b the whole square rigbuck constant 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square okay so for a fixed n1 and n2 let's say i'm talking about only k alpha okay k alpha or let's say i'm talking about k beta so there is a fixed transition between the two quantum states so mu is equal to some constant times z minus b whole square or i can say root of mu is equal to a constant times z minus b okay this is the final outcome and this is called the moseley's law this spelling could be this is moseley's law so if you draw a graph between these two things root of frequency and atomic number z what you will get a straight line this yes. hmm tell me no sir sorry sir i thought i had to uh, tell me anyone has any doubt this is the complete theory of the x ray no one has any doubt control n1 and n2 right what say it again we can't control n1 and n2 right ah uh, you cannot control n1 n2 but first k alpha will come then k beta will come okay so can you go to the previous slide for one second i think i missed something hmm.
all right let us take some numericals now okay on x ray only i hope you are able to read it clearly let me know if it is not readable Okay, no one. So one sec, one sec. Vikas is not well. He is not there. Anybody else who did not come? परम आंसर बता आंसर ठीक है एक्सप्रेशन क्या बता रहा है सो आई डोंट नो हाउ टू फाइंड दैट स्क्वायर रूट विदाउट यूजिंग अ कैलकुलेटर दैट इज व्हाट दे आर चेकिंग whether you can find it कांसेप्ट एवरीबॉडी नोस Should we do it now? Everyone yes, has okay. All right. Fine. So potential difference. Should you want me to tell the final answer first? Okay. Let me check if I can get hold of the final answer quickly. friends oh 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 okay final answer is 1 by 20 all right so let's do this we have a potential difference of this much applied on the x ray tube that coolies tube is also called x ray tube okay so take it at that way de broglie wavelength to the shortest wavelength of the x ray produced shortest wavelength of x ray will be for the maximum frequency for which the entire kinetic energy of the electron gets converted into the photon so lambda threshold is equal to h c by e times 1000 okay this is the minimum wavelength now for the uh, what is that 
डी ब्रूगली वेवलेंथ डी ब्रूगली वेवलेंथ इज एच बाय मोमेंटम एम इन टू वी दिस इज वेलोसिटी एंड मास टाइम मोमेंटम यू कैन राइट इट एज ओ आई नाउ विल गेट इट so you could have directly used that formula do you remember that 1.22 uh, divided by root v nanometers do you remember this everyone yes sir okay this is the de broglie wavelength so you can get it as 1.22 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by root 1000 anybody knows root 1000 how much correct All right, so this is the way you have to do this particular question. This is again uh, J. This question came in J. All right, so this is how it comes. Do this. Assume that screening factor B is equal to one for all cases, whether it is K alpha, L alpha, K beta. Screening factor is this only you need to find uh, the wavelength of k beta in terms of wavelength of k alpha and wavelength of l alpha okay so let me write this as lambda 1 and this as lambda 2 don't use the values so i have made the calculation simpler for you All of you have written this. Yes. So how is lambda one, lambda two, lambda three? They are related. Just look at the equation. How are they related? What do you think? Huh? 
Can you look at some pattern here? If you multiply one by lambda, one by lambda. How about how? So I got one by lambda k b or one by lambda three is equal to one by lambda one plus one by lambda two. Look at this. If you add these two equations, you get a third equation, isn't it? So one by lambda three is equal to one by lambda one plus one by lambda two. You can get this, or you can just divide these two equation. The first and second you can divide. You can get lambda two in terms of sorry. You can divide this equation with that. You can get lambda three in terms of lambda one or lambda three in terms of lambda two. Also, you can get by dividing it. But this one is straightforward. The first relation which we have got. You can just add two equations. You get the third one. This is the last question on X-ray. Okay. This one at least all of you should get it. It's a straightforward question. All right. The answer is eight into ten to the power eighteen hertz. How it comes? For example, root of frequency is some constant into z minus one. It is k alpha. So frequency is some constant into z minus one whole square. So for copper. We have a frequency of two into ten to the power eighteen. This is equal to constant into z minus one, that is twenty eight square. So for the for the other element, we have k into fifty seven minus one, that is fifty six square. That is four times k into twenty eight square. That is four times of the given frequency okay fine so this is the introduction of x ray now you are fully equipped to take any questions from anywhere on these two chapters so let us see whether you can take it up some of the other questions anyone has any doubts till now from anywhere on these two chapters quickly ask okay. So could you repeat the values of b for k alpha k beta again? I took down point seven. I it is there on the PDF. I'll share it. Okay, don't worry. I have already told you, na? K alpha. So so k alpha k beta is one, right? Ah, uh, for l alpha, it is seven point four. Okay. Anyone has any doubt? That was not a doubt. No one. Should we start taking numericals? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yellow. We have already solved many numericals, though. 
but then i thought today we could be doing more as these chapters are very important Okay, first question, CBD, three different answers people are getting. Why is that? Hmm? Okay, should we do it now? All right, looks like everybody has attempted the first question. We'll be doing the first one. Uh, intensity of this much. Intensity, you know, intensity is power per unit area. This is the intensity which is falling perpendicularly over this surface. It reflects half the energy and absorbs half. So for electron, how much uh, power will be there? Whatever is falling on it divided by two. This much power is available for electron to absorb because half of it getting reflected away. So electron can absorb only half the power. Okay. So power that is coming up is 750 into this is per meter square. Okay. So you need to convert in meter. 50 into 100 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. So four zeros are gone. You will get 5 into 775. That is 375, right? 375 watts. This is the power which is falling. Half of it is available for the electrons to absorb. 375 by 2. In one minute, how much energy will be absorbed this into 60 so it will be around 11.3 kilojoules i guess okay it's d d for delhi not c this one everyone second one do it carefully there is no race if you are in a hurry every time you'll make a silly error better to get zero than minus one Okay, should we do it now? Okay. I can see many of you are answering B. B for Bombay. All right, so let us see that total momentum transfer to the surface in one minute. Okay, so the 
power that is absorbed absorbed power is 375 by 2 and this is the power reflected also okay so power which is coming up coming towards is equal to dn by dt into h into mu so h c by lambda okay so we have dn by dt into h by lambda this is equal to power divided by speed of light now can you tell me what is this left hand side what is this anyone so is it momentum no it's h by lambda is momentum m by t uh, uh, t by t uh. what is dn by dt h by lambda it's the rate of change of momentum t by t it is rate of change of momentum okay see d total number of photons into h by lambda is total momentum when you differentiate it with time you get rate of change of momentum so dn by dt into h by lambda is rate of change of momentum so it will help if you remember that rate of change of momentum is power divided by speed of light okay this is for a given power now because of the reflection how much momentum will be transferred if incoming momentum is let's say x if re if it reflects off so total momentum transferred will be what 2x 2x 2 times if it is absorbed only one times okay so the rate at which momentum is transferred is for the reflected one you can say power reflected divided by c into 2 plus power absorbed divided by c this is the rate at which momentum is transferred with per second that into 60 seconds is a total momentum that is transferred to the surface okay good thing is that power reflected and power absorbed they are equal so you can take it out so you'll have 3 into 3 into 375 by 2 which is power absorbed divided by speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 into 60 this is your power that is transferred can anyone quickly calculate what it is they come b on this one it's come it can be okay i'm assuming you are correct calculation wise fine so this is how you have to solve this particular question we proceed now anyone has any doubt no doubts so hmm. So doesn't it come like the same answer as the previous one? Like look at the calculation. What what say it again? So it comes as the same one as the, the uh, like the energy. So somewhere so the option is D. Yes, you, you're getting D. Yeah, it's D. You're getting D if you do this calculation. So C so it's like the energy calculation. You get so I can't trust you on calculation. Somebody is saying something, somebody else is saying something else. Uh, I did a slightly different yourself. method, that's why I got... No, no, you get B only. Oh, wait, wait. 375 into 60 into 3 by 3. Huh? You get a D. You get uh, 11,000... 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 is power minus 4. You get D. You don't get B. Calculation of that. I mean, that is the least I can expect. You can calculate it properly. Huh? Why are you making silly error? So I, def I did a slightly different method. That's why I got B. I'll check it. I told what is the calculate, what is the final answer of that calculation. I asked that. I didn't ask what sorry, did you get, right? This one, 
this is what you can do if you are uh, in the space. <laughs> carry a torch So I didn't understand it. Oh, how do we go? Momentum will create a force. So with flashlight. Hmm. Flashlight. Okay. There's a reflector of the flashlight. The reflector hai, yahan se light hai. It'll hit the reflector and bounce off like that. That hitting on this reflector create a force this way. Take care, Uchir. Yes, sir. Just seems a bit weird. That. Yeah, yeah, but then <laughs> if you're in a space, very difficult to get hold of something to apply force. So you will rely on photons. Chaitanya got something. So what is radiation pressure mean? Force per unit area due to radiation. Okay. You're attending class on which device? Param? On tab or something? It's on my computer, sir. Okay, the sound is coming somewhere. Anyways, okay, shall we do this? Reflector of the flashlight is this much area. The power is this. So, uh, rate of change of momentum. P is momentum actually. I don't know why in physics they keep on using the same symbol for everything. Anyways, you understand, right? This is the force, dp by dt, which is power divided by speed of light. We just derived it, isn't it? So power is uh, 1000 divided by 3 into 10 raised to power 8. This is force. So pressure, pressure is also P. <laughs> Pressure, power, and momentum. Everything is P. Momentum should be M, but M is mass. Okay. So pressure is this uh, 10 is power minus 5 divided by 3 divided by 0. 0.5. How much this is? 1 divided by 1.5 into option 10. A. Option A. Thank you. Option A. Option A. Option A. Option A. Yes, looks like. All right, do this. No, wait, wait, wait. Option A is not correct. Oops, there is a silly error. Can you add, can you identify where is that? What is that in the solution? Jaldi batao. Chaldi. 
No one. Obviously error. Param will tell. Param. You don't know. Okay. Ruchir. Ruchir will tell. Ruchir Parekh and Ruchir Singh. Both Ruchirs. So it should be twice of that. Right? Ah, it should be twice. It is getting reflected. So the option A is not correct. B is correct. So, but why do you need to make it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is reflecting. Momentum transfer will be two times of the initial momentum. Okay, do this now. Is a const is, is it a constant force? Yes, sir. So acceleration will be constant. So I can use a kinematics equation. Yes, sir. To Karo use. One fifty kg. Aja gear is also there. This is the acceleration. You just need to estimate how many seconds and then which formula will you use? S equal to ut plus half at square. Initial velocity is zero. Time taken will be two times distance divided by acceleration. Distance is hundred kilometers. Two into ten raised to power five. Divided by acceleration, that is two, three goes here, 150 goes there, two into 10 is power minus five. So 10 is power five comes out, two is gone, so it is root 450. Root of 450 into 10 is power five, or you can say root of 4.5 into 10 is power 6. What is root of 4.5? Around 2.1, 2.2. So 2.2 lelo chalo. 10 is power 6. So how many uh, days it is? Huh? One, one month has how many seconds? Can you tell me one year has how many seconds? How many seconds one year has? These yes, three. Six, four, zero, zero, three, six, five. No, no, no. One year has how many seconds? You, sh you should be knowing all these things. Pi into 10 to the power 7 seconds, roughly. One year. So one month will have divided by 12. Okay. So pi divided by 12. Is around 1 by 4. So 2.5 into 10 plus 6. 2.5 into 10 plus 6. So it will be less than a month. No. Yeah. One. Yeah. So less than a month. So option A. Okay. So you can see here, they're checking how good you are with the numbers. How can you navigate to the answer rather than your concept? So everything counts. You should not be just focusing on, oh, I know the concept. I don't need to calculate anything. You'll be faltering where you expect the least. Okay, so all these things uh, should be you should be sharp in all these calculation related things as well. A simple question. Let do for you. Tell me the answer.
Chaiti got the answer. He got two answers. No, that was a previous one. Dash. Okay, should I do it? Nobody else is getting answer. Here, yeah, what what are you getting? Mm -hmm. Okay, Richard Singh got something. Kritika, your answer. Everybody is waiting for your answer. Kritika. Sir, I'm actually not writing anything because my hand is injured so i'm just listening to the problem solving and everything what happened like uh, i think my position or something was wrong so like i got a nerve compression and i can't write so i'm just listening that's just one hand right other hand you can't use the the one which is the main hand the nerve got compressed there yes sir hmm. Anyways, so the answer is C. Let us see. D. Bruegli wavelength of electron in orbit of hydrogen atom is this. Principal quantum number for this electron is what? Param, Param immediately changed the answer at huh? the moment. No, sir. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I found No it. excuse now. Sorry, sir. <laughs> So de Broglie wavelength is H by MV. This is equal to 10 is power minus nine. Okay. And uh, we know MVR is NH by two pi. So the value of M into V, we can substitute over here. You will get H divided by NH by 2 pi R. This is equal to 10 is power minus 9. Or 2 pi R divided by N. This is equal to 10 is power minus 9. This is a hydrogen atom, right? So R is equal to R naught. R naught is 0 0.53 into 10 is power minus 10, 0.53 Armstrong. You should know this. Is equal to 10 is power minus nine. Okay. This becomes 10. So the value of N. Okay. Huh. The value of N will be two pi into 0.53 Divide by 10, is it? Could silly error ki again up Factor of 10, I'm, am I missing? So the radius should be... Uh, N square, N square, yeah, 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 yeah. So N square will be there. R is equal to R naught into N square. So N, N. The value of n is 10 divided by 2 pi into 0 
this will be roughly three k. Okay. I hope everybody understood. Abiram, are you understanding? Abiram. You're on mute, Abiram. Sometimes I wonder whether you guys are there or not. Okay, this is. ठीक है, चलो ये भी कर लो. ओके चैतन्य साई अनुष वरुण रुचिर एवरीबॉडी इज गेटिंग डी गुड डी ब्रुगली वेवलेंथ इन द ग्राउंड स्टेट शुड बी इक्वल टू द सरकमफेरेंस ओके वी नो दैट टू पाई आर शुड बी एन लेम्डा राइट दैट वी हैव लर्न अबाउट इट व्हेन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज अ वेव इट गोस लाइक दिस so 2 pi r should be equal to n lambda and if n equal to 1 that is ground state so lambda should be equal to 2 pi r so 2 pi into 0.53 am strong which you will get it as b so in ground state why is n 1 principal quantum number na? that is the k shell It is a definition of it. Any confusion? So I thought that you use the principal quantum number to find which radius it's in. No, no. Principal quantum number tells you the radius, its velocity, its energy, everything it tells. Okay. okay. Everything is a function of n. Not only just the radius, everything. Energy is 13.6 by n square. When n is 1, it has the least energy. That's the ground state.
assume it to be a young's double set sort of uh, situation wherein the capital d is very large No one is close to the answer. So I, I am one. Where is fifty-five degree in this diagram? So the red line. The is red line. line below hmm. Smart. This is fifty-five. How do you find the path difference? And so n lambda a capital D by small. D. You drop a perpendicular here. This is your path difference. How much it is? Trigonometry. You can use here what it will be. This there is a path difference. How much it will be? D sine theta. Right? Ah, D sine theta. D sine fifty three. This is the path difference. How much this should be? For the what is the second order maxima? How much this should be equal to? Two lambda. Two lambda. Two lambda. Two h. Two h. ठीक है. चलो. Get the answer quickly now. And Rujar Parekh got something. He got something. Others, Chaitanya Pradyut. Lambda is d sine fifty three by two. Lambda can be written as h by mv. right so velocity is 2 h divided by md sin of 53 how much you get by substituting the values around 600 hmm precisely it will be 589 yes, meter per second this is the velocity which is 5 times of 111 The answer for K is five. Correct. Okay. Sir, how did you get fifty-three degrees of it? Fifty-five. Eh, sorry, fifty-three. Why did I write that? Fifty-five. It is. Okay. Okay. Aja one one thing someone told at the start that J advanced test physics was very easy. Is that correct? Like uh, others also felt like that. Rucher Parek, Rucher Singh. Did you find physics much easier than chemistry and maths in advanced test? Oh yes, it's in the first test. The second test was hard. 
harder than yeah, first test was the first test was simpler and yes. second test second test which was the simplest out of three subjects so they are all equal only sir okay 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 i'll take special care now i'll make harder only who else wrote uh, ruchir singh ruchir parekh then who else from this he also wrote right he wrote then who else so i wrote chatanya wrote okay akshit also wrote. mahit also wrote okay fine so you know right the topper what is the marks he got who is the topper tripan tripan so you have checked it right after these guys have written the test so tripan has got the highest marks in paper 1 he got uh, i guess 131 he got in paper 1 paper 2 also he topped 104 okay so this is the marks and don't worry about your uh, marks in jd1 suppose you write jd1 paper and you are worried that oh it is too less uh, it is useless for me to prepare for j advanced so all those thought don't let that come in because when you prepare for j advanced every other exam automatically get prepared so you are if you are only preparing for advanced suppose you don't get selected in advanced but then in the process of preparing for advanced you have learned many many new things which you can utilize in every other exam you write okay so don't get bogged down upon it so like when you are if you are writing j advanced write all the j advanced test and also prepare for it you know without preparation don't write also but for school uts if you miss this this a crime like what someone in our group has done do this you know these questions are designed in a way that if you are in a hurry you will definitely pick a wrong answer i'm getting all sorts of answers b c d okay all right let us discuss let us discuss the answer i'll tell the answer later definitely b is not the answer 
those who got B and in a hurry, that is wrong. Okay. Fine. So in a photo emissive cell, what is photo emissive cell? The photons when uh, it is hit, it will create electrons. With exciting wavelength lambda, the maximum kinetic energy is K. So we can write K is equal to H C by lambda minus work function. Okay, if exciting wavelength is changed to 3 lambda by 4, then the kinetic energy will be what? Let's say it is k1, this is k2. Now it is 3 lambda by 4, so it will become 4 hc 4 by 3, this thing minus phi. Okay, I want to compare k1 and k2, right? How will I compare? I'll just subtract k1 and k2. So I will get K2 minus K1 to be equal to uh, okay. All right, they want to compare with 4K by 3, right? So I'll multiply 4K by 3. I multiply 4 by 3 on the upper equation, 4 by 3 like this. Then I can compare K2 with 4K1 by 3. So 4k1 by 3 minus k2 is equal to, uh, this is minus, minus, this is plus, so minus 5 by 3, okay. So looks like k2 is more than 4k1 by 3. That is the reason why when I subtract k2 from 4k1 by 3, I am getting negative. So that's why option D. Everybody understood those who told B is the answer? Yes, sir. So you are in a hurry. You are not even seeing that there is a minus over here, this thing. Okay. This is done. Okay, so everyone is getting C. Let us see. So we have K equal to H C by lambda minus <coughs> phi. Phi depends on the surface, which remains same for both, for all three. So K is E times V. So E times V1 is H C by lambda 1 minus phi E times V2 H C by lambda 2 minus phi E times V3 is equal to H C by lambda 3 minus phi. 
So we know that uh, over here it is V1, V2, V3 are in arithmetic progression. So two times of V2 is equal to V1 plus V2. All right. So if I add this, sorry, V1 plus V3. If I add these two, it will be two times of this left hand side. So you will also get two times of lambda two is equal to one by lambda one plus one by lambda three, which is harmonic mean. So yes, you guys are correct. Option C. Do this. Rucher has answered something quickly. Okay. It's option me near Rucher. Which option? I think I made a mistake. Option pick Kanna Brega as any.
Okay, no one, no one got anything. Should I do it? So can you give some more time? At time, me to nahi apne pas. Okay, one minute. Anybody close to the answer? I got no. Yeah, I think stuck towards the last. So I don't know what's wrong. Acha answer aa gaya option mein nahi hai. Yes. That's like no. That's very frustrating, right? An objective question. Spend yes. so much time. Okay, Rocher Parek got some option. Chaitanya got something. Anush got something. Sai, why are you shouting? Sorry, so my caps lock was on. All right, let me do it now. Many of you have already answered. Light beam has total intensity of this. Falls on an iron piece of area this. So we'll find out power quickly. Power supplied is 10 is power minus six watt. Right. Ah, stop typing your answers. Now I'm solving it. Work function is given. So see this, this question is pretty long, right? So while you're reading, you should write down these things. Iron sample reflects 96% of light. Okay. So only 4% of this power is absorbed for photoelectric emission. So only 4% is absorbed. So I'll multiply with 0 0.04. It says 3%. Huh? It says only 3% no. causes four times. 4% of intensity is the 96 is reflected away. 4% is absorbed. So this much power is absorbed. Out of this absorbed thing, only 3% causes photoelectric emission. It has a mix of wavelengths. It doesn't have a single wavelength. Okay. So 3% of it causes the photoelectric emission. So this is the effective power of the radiation, which is, sorry, which is creating photoelectric emission. All of you understand this, everyone? Sir, can you repeat it? Yeah. 12 into 10 raised to power minus, uh, wait, it is minus 10, right? 10. So this is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 9. Read the question carefully and look at what I have written and then ask me doubts. Don't tell me to repeat. So like tell how do you get that out. 4 and then 73? I didn't get that. So question padna pehle bhai. Question pad kya likha pe? It reflects 96%. How much yes, it will sir. absorb? Ta? 4%. 4% to era 4%. Thik hai? Then when it absorbs it, only 3% of the absorbed energy is causing photoelectric emission. So this is the absorbed energy, 3% of it causes photoelectric. So I have to multiply that also. Understood? Yes, sir. So this is the effective power which creates photoelectric emission. All right. And uh, then what we need to find number of electrons emitted everyone is clear about it right dn by dt yes, uh, dn by dt is equal to power effective power which is this 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by divided by the uh, hc by lambda Okay, wavelength is 250 nanometer. So I can use that electron volt thing. So one, two, four, two divided by 250 electron volt. So 1.6 into 10 to minus 19, convert that into joules. How much it is? 
So what we subtract the work function there with the energy. Work function, why you have to subtract? From where you get that? Why you have to subtract? So because we need to check the total energy consumed. So it's the number of electrons emitted, so that's why. Ah, so number of electrons emitted will be number of uh, photons that are hitting. One photon, one electron. What is the problem? You can yes, sir. Yes, you sir. can check whether the wavelength of this has enough energy than that. If it is enough energy, then it will create photoelectric emission. If it is not, answer will be zero. But zero answer is not in the option, so you don't need to check. So dn by dt is what? Do this. Everybody understood, right? Yes, sir. So, kitna answer are you? Dn by dt. No one. Anybody doing it? So I'm still yes, confused in the last Pele answer, answer, Pele answer, but okay. 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 discuss. Are roughly you can tell. One point five in the ten power of ten. Ten for ten or ten is for nine. nine. No, nine. nine. Sorry. Nine. <laughs> yes, it it's not just about knowing the concept, okay? So this is the answer D. What is it out? So the last step, how did you get it? I didn't understand that. There you go. D N by D T into h mu this is power na yes sir to wahi to kiya hai yahan pe par kya h mu i have written in electron volt the formula is 1242 divided by wavelength in nanometers that much electron volt is h mu okay got it sir anybody else have any doubt no sir no doubts okay fine so this is the time to take a break now 6 08 we'll meet after 15 minutes 6 23 come on time bye for now start Anyone? The first answer? Is it six? Um, so I got six, but then I'm thinking it's n squared by z, right? So it should, it should be too early. Tell me one answer or just message me your answer. Okay. Don't speak out. Everybody else is also doing it. Okay. Fine. So it looks like uh, everybody has tried. The angular momentum is 3x by 2 pi. So quantum number is how much? N is equal to? Three. Three. Because 
angular momentum should be nh by 2 pi. So n is 3. The deep nuclear wavelength of electron is this, where A0 is a Bohr's radius. And it is a lithium plus radius is equal to R0 into what? N square by Z. You remember this? Yes, sir. Okay. So R0 is basically A0 here. A0 N square by Z. This is R. D Bruglie wavelength of the electron in this state. So D Bruglie wavelength is uh, is equal to in this state 2 pi r should be equal to n lambda over here n is 3. So this is 3. So lambda is 2 pi r by 3. Okay, you can also get deep Bruglie wavelength as h by mv. Like that you can proceed and multiply r numerator and denominator. So mvr is nh by 2 pi. So you'll get this. Okay. mvr, you multiply r numerator denominator. mvr is nh by 2 pi. So like this, you can arrive at wavelength to be this. You don't need to uh, find out the velocity and all. Okay. This is your wavelength lambda. And R is basically A naught N square, which is three square by Z. Z is what? Z is three, mm. isn't it? So it will get canceled away like this. So lambda is uh, equal to two pi A naught. So the value of P is two. Just go through it once and let me know any doubts. Some of many of you, I think, got six. Okay. Understood, right? This one? Yes, sir. Second question What is the answer? It's one. The slope is same. Slope is same. Yes, sir. Right. If yes, sir. if there is any doubt, don't guess. Better you do it your own. Like this, k is equal to h mu minus phi. K is e times stopping potential. H mu minus phi. You will get v is equal to h by e times mu minus phi by e. So you can see slope is h by e only no matter what is the value of phi. So it is slope will be same for both. That's why one is to one. These are J advanced questions from this chapter. Actual questions. Do this. You might be knowing how to solve it, but here it is about accuracy and speed. So let's see who get the un correct answer first.
all right ruchir singh got the correct answer congratulations ruchir only ruchir singh got it correct till now no no param that's not correct hc by lambda is 1242 divided by 200 6.21 electron volt param do your calculation correct 1242 by lambda just do that Hia got it correct. Ruchir Parekh now got it correct. Chaitanya got it correct. Okay, good. Photon's energy is more than six electron volt corresponding to this. Photoelectric emission will happen to start with. but it will stop because the isolated sphere will slowly and slowly lose electron and become positive charge so if potential which uh, sphere generate is v it will act like a stopping potential so when e times v becomes equal to h mu minus phi the photo, uh, the photoelectrons will stop emitting h mu can be written as 1242 divided by 200 electron volt minus 4.7 that into e this should be equal to e times v so good thing is that e get cancelled away so v is what 1 1242 divided by 200 is how much it 6. is 6.21 6.21 6.21 minus 4.7 this much should be the potential this is equal to number of electrons n into charge of an electron 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 uh, divided by 1 by 4 pi epsilon not which is 9 into 10 to the power 9 divided by the radius which is 10 to the power minus 2 so when you simplify all of this uh, you will get n to be equal to 7 into no wait, wait wait you will get uh, like this you know you don't need to even get the exact expression you should just make sure that the the thing a is between 1 and 10 okay so i'm sure you might be getting something like this inside the bracket into 10 to the power 7 so the value of z is 7 okay everybody understood okay all right we'll proceed forward this is done this one
Param, how many times you change your answer? So I didn't see electron and photon. I thought both were the same. So oh, no, I... I'm yeah. asking how many times today have you changed the answer? At least like eight times. Almost every question. So, so for this time I changed it fast. Like even in the paper, I would have done. That. Okay, but just to tell you, the earlier answer was correct. What you choose later on was wrong. Oh. It was okay. fast. <laughs> okay, others. Roger Parekh answered. Anybody else? No one else. Should we solve it then? Abhiram, what is your answer? All right, so let's proceed. A photon collides with a stationary hydrogen atom in a ground state in al inelastically. Inelastically means what? The photon will get uh, absorbed inside the hydrogen atom. Okay, and the mass of hydrogen atom is so big that you can ignore the final velocity after the collision. Okay, as if nothing is there. It's just a single photon. H by lambda, the uh, H by lambda is so less. Energy of colliding photon is given 10.2 electron volt. After a time interval of order of microsecond, another photon collides. But before that, what will happen? If 10.2 electron volt is colliding, it will go from n equal to one to two or not. The electron inside the hydrogen atom will do this or not. First collision. Everyone, yes, sir. as soon as it does this, immediately it will be back from n equal to 2 to n equal to 1 and emit a photon back. It will not even wait for a microsecond. It happens in the order of 10 to the power minus 8 second around. Okay. It is written in your NCRT book somewhere. But anyway. Uh, sir, in in this question, why aren't we using that thing that we did last class? We only what? say that the energy which is absorbed is half of the incoming of the energy of the photon which is coming. No, there it was, uh, you know, number of photons, let's say, are five, six, sorry. Then out of six, three will be reflected and three will be absorbed. Inelastically collision with only a single photon, it means that it, it ab absorbs. What is inelastic collision? It absorbs. Okay. And it's a single photon only. Earlier, there were multiple photons. Half of it will be absorbed. So that was actually neutrons, sir. And they what? said same mass. Yes, so yeah, I just, yeah, I saw that. What? Oh, you're talking about some other question, is it? Which one? So last class we were doing. Oh, those last things. class. Both, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, the neutron was hitting hydrogen atom, almost same mass. Okay. So, yes. Sir. So yeah, there you need to, you can't assume finally everything is at rest. Here you can assume. All right, so it will emit a photon of 10.2 electron volt, that is for sure. So now what happens, it comes to ground state and then absorbs 15 electron volt. What will happen if it absorbs 15 electron volt? So 13.6 will get wasted to come out of the atom and then after that 1.4 electron volt will uh, kinetic energy of the emitted electron is 1.4 electron volts. So a photon and one electron of this much kinetic energy. So option C. Okay. Fine. Let's proceed. This is done.
This is again a J advanced question. Came in 2005. You can see they are testing how you calculate, not the concept. No one, even close to the answer. They got something that can't be correct. How much message? I got, yeah, fine. Anybody else close the answer? Nine 
Nobody else? Should we solve? I texted it. Others? Okay. So nth line of Lyman series, the wavelength is what? One by lambda is Rigberg constant into, it is a hydrogen like element. Okay, so. So, then, so can I change my answer? Okay. I didn't see nth line. I put n value. One by one square minus one by n square. This is one by lambda. Okay. This is one by lambda, and uh, lambda is equal to h by mv. Also, it should be the uh, de Broglie wavelength of electron in the initial orbit of hydrogen. Initial orbit is n equal to one. So lambda is equal to I multiply r both sides mvr and it is a first orbit so mvr is nh by 2 pi n is 1 so h by 2 pi so lambda is 2 pi r okay now r you know what is it r in the first orbit is 0 0.53 into 10 is power minus 10 okay this is your r this is your Sir? lambda isn't lambda missing one n n by n? What? So it should be n h by two pi, right? Are this initial orbit na n is equal to one? Oh, so, but the radius is going to be this divided by eleven, right? Oh, n by z. Sorry, correct, correct. Radius ra radius is that n by z. Okay. So what did I do? Is this correct? This is how it is, right? So it's n squared by z, but n is 1. n is 1, so this divided by 11. Correct? This is our uh, lambda. So I am going to substitute this lambda over there, put the value of Rigberg constant, and then simplify the expression. And anybody good with the numbers? will be able to find out that finally it will come out to be like this n minus 1 by n is roughly equal to 25. This is what you will get and from this equation n is close to 25 only. Fine. So but answer will be 24 right they ask nth line. Answer is 25. N is 25. Find the value of N. So, but in Lyman series, when we say like first line, that's 2 to 1. Second line, third to 1. So, Nth line will be N plus 1 to 1, right? Nth line of Lyman series. Like here, we found the number of the shell. No, no, so, you, you're correct. What, what you're trying to say is that uh, first line you're saying is n equal to 2 to 1. Second line is 3 to 1. So I'm saying n to 1. So this should be n minus 1. n minus 1 should be 25. Wait, so how did it become 25? It is approximate, Mehul. Uh, this is, there is no problem. Here there is no problem. What he's saying that for nth line, the value of n should be n plus 1. That, that's what you're saying, right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And the, yes, sir. we found the shell number. So nth will be 24, I think. Okay, I'll just check and come back to you. Nth, what is the meaning of nth line of Lyman series? Because the first line itself will have transition from 2 to 1, like what you're saying. But then nomenclature wise, I don't know how it is named because Usually there is no logic as such, you know, we can, you can name it in anything. For example, central maxima doesn't, ex central minima doesn't exist. Okay, so the nomenclature I have to see how it is written. So this is something I'll come back. Okay, okay. but then logic wise, this is how you proceed.
just says done, this is done. Yes, I just checked the value of n. Here you should write n plus one. So the value of n will be equal to 24 then. So the nth series of Lyman series means you are transitioning from n plus one to one. Okay, not from n to one. Just make a note of it, write, write it somewhere. Nth series of Lyman series means n plus one to one. That's very important. Oh, so sorry, I didn't see the other options. Okay, anyone? That is not in the option, Rahul. Yes, sir, sir. that was for electron. Yeah. I'll, I'll change again. What's the mass of a proton again? 1.67 10 to the power minus All right, Ruchir got something. Nobody else. Chaitan and Okay, okay. Fine. Anyways, I'll do it now. The it makes a transition, a recoil speed. So what will happen here? Conversion of momentum because photon will be emitted. 
initial momentum of everything is zero when photon is emitted with a momentum of h by lambda the recoil of hydrogen atom will be there its momentum should be let's say mv will be opposite direction of this so mass time velocity should be equal to h by lambda and i know 1 by lambda is rigberg constant 1 by 1 minus 1 by 5 square okay so velocity you will get it as rigberg constant rh into planck constant divided by mass of the proton i am ignoring mass of electron which is nothing compared to the proton so this is 24 by 25 24 by 25 also you can assume close to 1 you can do some approximation because options are very far away from each other okay so when you do all of this what you get c right yes yeah, sir so you also yes, multiply with 10 because here this formula that we used is for centimeter inverse which formula we have used 1 by lambda is equal to rh into whatever no so that 109677 is per centimeter inverse no i'm not writing that i haven't even put in the value of rh okay. rh you should use in the uh, in the si units what is the value of rh in si unit that into 10 to the power 7 7 7 yeah we use it yeah okay i think yeah in chemistry probably they are using centimeter but it doesn't matter even in chemistry you can use uh, si units advik getting it are you with me advik advik hai ki gaya advik hai advik Advik and Abiram, they are not responding. Do this. Richard got something. Others. atomic number you might have got markings you know right plus 5 minus 2 one wrong option you're gone understand param yes so you picked one wrong option
Okay. All right. Others? Here, what is your answer? Akansha is also there. Akansha, what is your answer? Mehul, did you get anything? Mehul. No, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. We will do it now. A particular hydrogen like atom has its ground state binding energy of this. All right. So, ground state binding energy is this, which we know should be equal to 13.6 n square by z. No, wait. Z square by N square. This is the energy, binding energy is when N is equal to 1. This is given as 122.4. So, look at the option. You can directly use it. Check whether Z equal to 3 satisfies this and it will. So, option A is correct. Okay. Now, look at option D. Electron of kinetic energy this much may emerge when 125 electron volt collide. Is this correct? Option D. It should be right. I'm that's what I'm asking. Is it correct? Right? It is correct. So A yes, and, sir. A and D two options are correct. Fine. So binding energy this much. This energy is absorbed and balance will be emitted as a kinetic energy. Okay. Now let's see with B and C which one is correct. So let's look at what they're asking actually. One of them should be correct because um, no, 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 they are different types. Anyways, electron of this much electron volt kind of energy can be brought almost to rest by this atom. And electron of this can excite the atom at the room temperature. No, they are similar. Similar kind of options are there. So when electron is coming up, the mass of the electron is so less that you can assume that entire energy of electron will be absorbed. After collision, the velocity is almost zero. Okay. So if electron of some energy is absorbed or it excites it, the difference in energy level should be equal to 19.8 electron volt. So let us see energy levels. What are they? So energy at the ground state is 122.4 electron volt, right? Energy at the second state, how much it is? How much it is? This divided by 2 square, how much? Somewhere around 30. Where exactly, Vata? Right. So 30.6. 30.6. Okay. Right. Electron volt. What is the difference between E1 and E2? So 91.8 91 91 electron volt. So it can absorb this much kinetic energy and it will excite and the uh, it will be at rest because entire energy is transferred. So this is why C is also correct. Okay. Now is B correct? Electron of 90 volt, 90 volt as in 90 electron volt energy can excite. No, it is not possible because minimum energy required is 91.8 to go to the next level from ground state, right? So that's why options A, C, D, they are correct. Understood, Param? Yes, so that I always remember the difference in 1 and 2 was 10. So I just multiplied with 9 and yeah, ah, 10.2. Correct, correct. Yeah. Got it wrong, no? Yes, sir. Lack of exam practice. Yes. That's how you can blame it on something else. 
lack of exam practice and uh, maybe a little bit of overconfidence is there confidence is good but uh, make sure you are grounded otherwise you will make lot of silly errors and these are these questions are like trap the moment you are slack little bit you are gone so you might have counted number of silly errors you have made today have you too many sir it is easy to count number of non silly i mean number of correct ones even though you know how to solve see how slippery these questions are first one first one acha by the way this is n 1 by n to the power 3 by 2 okay so i think that this is what they meant n to the power 3 divided by 2 yes sir because i got it because i'm getting q by n q <laughs> yeah no no it is Power three by two. Whenever they say proportional, they will not include any constant. Which one? A, B, C, D. So according to what you think, then D. Yeah. Then D. D. Okay. Why? I mean, <laughs> if it is proportional to two by n cube, it is proportional to one by n cube also. Both are correct. Yes. So, but like in chemistry, there is something like similar to this, and so it's like. the closer option more accurate option is the correct answer i don't know what it is you can check again with gorov or you tell the question what it is exactly but here it cannot be 2 by n cube by n 1 by n cube both options are correct then 2 is a constant proportional is with variable not with the constant anyways uh, so all of you got d na anyone We did not That's get B. Okay, so H mu is equal to hydrogen like atom. Make transition with quantum number n to n minus one. So H mu is thirteen point six electron volt. Z square one by n square minus no one by n minus 1 whole square minus 1 by n square so you will get frequency is equal to some constant times 1 by n minus 1 whole square this so frequency is that 2 n minus 1 divided by n into n minus 1 whole square one is very less compared to n so i'll ignore this and this so it will be k 2n n divided by n to the power 4 so it will be 
two k is another constant. That side constant is c divided by n cube. So c. This one. Alright, it was simple. Eh? We have done it. Right, n c two. Six c two. Not six. Four c two. Yeah, four c two. Okay. No doubts, right? We'll proceed. Sir, is it n minus one c two, sir? No. If there is any confusion, take example of n equal to three and draw the number of lines. You'll find it is. Accordingly, yeah. is, right? And if you take three, then it should be one and minus one c two. Then, oh yes, yes, sir, sorry, sir. Answer for the first one. Different answers people are giving. Okay, I'm getting multiple answers. A, B, C. Nobody for D. How much energy? How much energy hydrogen can give right now? Hydrogen can go from n equal to hydrogen atom transfer the total energy to helium plus. So hydrogen can go from two to one. And transfer its energy. How much energy it will trans? It can transfer 10.2 electron volt. It can transfer. Okay. Right now, helium is at energy level of uh, helium correspond to n equal to two. Okay. So uh, the energy of the helium in n equal to two is how much? 13.6. Divided by n square, which is four, into z square. Z is two. This is also four. So at the second level itself, its energy is this much. Energy at the. If you are judicious enough, you will understand 
that if you put n equal to 4 you will get energy uh, like this 13.6 divided by this is 16 and this is uh, z square is 4 so this is how much 3.4 3.4 electron volt okay so you will get a you know if you are good with numbers you will get a fair idea that e4 will be this much and difference will be 10.2 electron volt between e2 and e4 so hydrogen if it gives this much energy to helium it can jump from 2 to 4 you can also you know find out e3 in between and check all that so answer is this for helium now do this Okay, can you tell me uh, from it is right now it n equal to four, right? So between which level to which level, if it goes, it can give the visible spectra. What do you think? From four to what is E three by the way? E three is how much? Anybody calculated? There is how many electron volts? 3.6. Ah, no. No, uh, no, sorry. Uh, 4.5. Yeah. 4.5 electron volt. Okay. So jumping from 4.5 to 2, it's like a Lyman series. It will emit ultraviolet spectrum. So the gap is big. It is almost like 10. Okay. But then this jump could lead to visible spectrum four to three so you need to uh, you know analyze the situation you can't just blindly go there otherwise you know the kind of calculation you become mad so e4 minus e3 can emit the visible spectrum because this gap 4.5 and 3.4 this gap looks like a lyman series gap which is very less so here you get the wavelength which i guess I'm not very sure about the answer though. Uh, let me find out what they have as the answer. But again, not 100% sure. Uh, there is a. I have given the same question to other batch. There was a tie between C and D. 
So just check, okay, E4 minus E3, whatever wavelength they emit, that is the answer, right? Now do this one. Hmm. Now, kinetic energy will be how much in terms of total energy? What will be the kinetic energy? Minus total energy. Minus total energy. So basically, magnitude of total energy is the kinetic energy only. Right? So the formula 13.6 uh, Z square by N square is the formula for the kinetic energy as well. Fine. So for N equal to 2, Kinetic energy for hydrogen atom is hydrogen atom's electron is this two square and for helium it is 13.6 two square into z square which is again two square only so the answer is one is to four everybody understood now i have exhausted all the questions all right on these two chapters. So I have made sure that you are exposed to each and every type of problem. Now you'll not see any new kind of problem unless it is like out of the world kind of question. We have done every possible kind of question from these two chapters. Anyone has any doubt from these two chapters? No, Jaldi. sir. No, sir. No. no, sir. No. So now we have only 30 minutes left. So it is not a good time to start a new chapter, right? So I would uh, think that maybe, uh, you know, we can solve some mechanics question for a half an hour and next class we can start nuclei. What do you think? Yes, sir. Okay, so what I'll do is that I have few questions which I know uh, they are slightly different types. So you may learn something new probably. So let us see. First I will give uh, these ones. I'll take a little bit of time to identify this one. Okay, tell the answer. Correct. You don't need to even solve it. Option A is correct. Yes. Okay, rem remember these things that in oblique collision, what is oblique collision? 
so like two dimensional oblique collision is when the uh, line of velocities and the line of common normal when the collision happens these two lines are not parallel to each other okay so it's for example this this ball comes and collides with that ball so they will exert force on each other in this direction but suppose line of velocity for this ball is this way okay so this line of velocity is not along the line of common normal so after collision this ball will go like this and the other ball will start moving in other direction that is what you do in carom board so in oblique collision the oblique collision between two equal masses if elastic then line of final velocities will be 90 degree to each other okay and if it is head on then what we can say in head on collision what we can say so then they will both be placed in the bar velocity is exchanged in head on why if i keep forgetting elastic or head on elastic collision velocities get exchanged okay remember these things i thought i could just remind you we have done though all of this you can check your notes and all but we keep forgetting that this one Okay, Ruchir answered something. Ruchir Singh. Others. So that is for some old question, sir. what so that answer i had sent that is some old question i think 
I didn't send any. We didn't send anything. Okay, okay. So send something. So just two. No one got the answer till now. Okay, Param got something. I hope Param correct this time. This time I'm pretty sure. Oh my God, let us see. This is a situation. Ruchir Parek got something. All right. All of you now focus here, everyone. So the second sphere B, B is at rest. Okay, A is moving. This is A, this is B. Right, uh, this guy, can I come? Edwick, correct? Edwick, Akansha, are you guys there? Well, I don't think Edwick can speak. He might no, Edwick can type, but yeah. Edwick was not there for at least half an hour in his place. Edwick. Akansha is not there, looks like. I don't know when this corona will get over. Anyways, let's continue. Now B is at rest, A is moving with velocity V. Now when A is hitting B, which direction A will apply force on B? In this direction or not? Everyone. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. sir. We can hear you. After, after collision, uh, Rajdeep is back now. So after collision, B will go in this direction or not? Because it was at rest. So whichever direction B will experience force, it will go in that direction. There's a velocity of B after collision. Which direction A will go after collision? In that So that same angle, but... Uh, Opposite direction. Perpendicular, just now we have learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just yes. Perpendicular. Yeah. Perpendicular, it will travel like this. This is velocity of A. Okay. Now, this angle theta, this is, this is theta. How to get that theta? This perpendicular distance is given to us as R by 2. So, I can get sine of theta. How much it will be? R by 2 divided by? This is center to center, which is 2R. Two two R. So sine theta is 1 by 4. Okay. Now, can I conserve momentum along the red line? Because I want to find out velocity of B. So I'll conserve momentum along the red line. Can I do that? Yes. Right? There is no external force. So initial momentum along the red line is MV cos theta. This should be equal to now, component of A's momentum along the red line is how much after collision? Zero, sir. Zero. This is equal to M into VB. So, VB is equal to V cos theta. So, sine theta is 1 by 4. So, cos theta is root 15 by 4. Okay. This is what the answer is. So, you can get it quickly also. 
no need to write some elaborate equations if you have these kind of ideas i hope everybody understood so this perpendicular is not because of both the masses being equal it's for any case right no when masses are equal we have derived it yeah. the last last question in fact last question of your ncert textbook on work by energy chapter is this only oblique collision oblique elastic collision between two equal masses theta 1 and theta 2 added up it will become 90 degree we have proved it in yes. the also masses has to be equal okay now i have to find something else um chalo this one abiram you can hear us कहा था तू अभिराम फॉर वन एंड हाफ आवर यू आर नॉट देर ऑल ऑफ यू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन all right what is the trick here so the velocity in the x direction is same yeah velocity in x direction will be constant because there is no friction and horizontally the ball doesn't experience any force so the momentum horizontally will be unchanged so we can't hear you what say it again Oh, I thought so. I couldn't hear any. So was he speaking to them? No. And I also didn't hear anything. No, I was not speaking. Okay, see. No, sir. I'm able to hear you. Mayul is able to hear me. Okay. Can you talk louder? So now, the along the horizontal direction, along the x-axis, momentum is unchanged. so m u sin 45 is a momentum horizontally this should be equal to m v sin theta so we have v sin theta equal to u by root 2 u sin 45 this is our first equation and along the normal i can use coefficient of restitution right so half should be equal to velocity of separation how much it is v by root u by yeah. velocity separation i am asking half is equal to velocity separation by velocity so v cos theta v cos theta by v cos theta. theta after collision comes for separation velocity before collision is approach approach is u cos 45 okay so you will get u cos sorry v cos theta 
is equal to u divided by 2 root 2. Now they are asking about the kinetic energy. For that, you need to find V. So just square and add first and two equation. You get V square equal to U square by 2, 1 plus 1 by 4. So V square is basically 5 by 4 times. No, 5 by 8 times. Yes. V square is 5 by 8 times U square. So kinetic energy is also 5 by 8 times uh, the initial kinetic energy so k2 is 5 by 8 times k1 so i have to find out k2 minus k1 divided by k1 right so it will be 3 by 8 right no doubts right so i have a doubt mm, but, uh, so uh, can you go back to the previous question no no you ask i remember all that you copy okay. it na? tell me yes sir so like if a ball like strikes uh, at a particular angle isn't it with respect to the floor the angle like right. in that case it was equal but generally equal a uh, ball strike at an angle of 45 no they should mention actually here since it is equal they have not mentioned it otherwise in the question they must mention the angle is with what got it yes sir there should not be any ambiguity Simple, very simple, 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 simple. Are it was a simple symbol. Okay, Chalo, let's do this.
Okay. So just write down the equations, you know, if you are not getting the calculations. Tell me what all we can do here. By the time it comes down, what happens to the ring? Ring will start moving or not? Everyone? Yeah. yeah. Let's go like, let's say this goes with V1. Ring goes with V2. What I can do? Can I conserve momentum horizontally? Yes, sir. Right, I can conserve momentum horizontally. So zero, which was initial momentum, will be equal to M into V2 minus 2M into V1. Horizontally, there is no external force. So V2 is equal to two times of V1. This is our first equation. What else I can do here? Energy. So you can conserve energy. Right? Energy ah. conservation. Work energy theorem I can use. This I can assume gravitation potential energy to be zero. I'll write W equal to U2 plus K2 minus U1 plus K1. Of course, dissipative forces are not there. W is zero. But it is better to write a generic formula like this rather than U2 plus K2 is equal to U1 plus K1. So this is equal to final kinetic, final potential energy is minus of 2 MgL. Final kinetic energy half uh, M into V2 square plus half 2m into v1 square minus u1 is 0 k1 is 0 this will give us the answer these two equations got it everyone yes sir yes sir Let me find some other. Have we done this question? Have you seen this before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> this one. I don't know whether it will take time, but we can, you know, discuss it out. Let's see whether, wait, wait, hold on. This is the complete question. Read the question and tell me your views. We don't have enough time to attempt it. Just read it. Okay, we'll discuss it out as in the ideas and after the class you can attempt and post the solution on the group. All of you read the question. Let me know once you have read the question. I'm not asking you to solve. There are two parts of the question. First part is the above paragraph. Next part is the below paragraph. Ready. All of you read it, right? Okay, yeah. tell me uh, how to get the first part. First part looks to be simple. So you use projectile, right? That's a very, very broad way of telling. Okay. Oh. Be so, more so, so the, the total velocity is going to be uh, 5 root 3 plus the components like five and three along x no no 
So horizontal velocity will be like this. The this velocity is absolute velocity. This velocity is absolute velocity. Oh, okay, sir. So. Otherwise, it would have been written. If it is not written, every time I assume it to be absolute. Huh. Okay, sir. So. How will you get t naught now? Tell me. So it it is becoming more simple, na? If it is absolute velocity. Yes, sir. So. so how will you get t naught? So so you take the x component and you add it to five root three. That will be the horizontal. Velocity. just now we discussed just now we discussed 10 meter per second is the uh, absolute velocity i think how will you get t not so so then we find the like the minimum distance for which the maximum distance for which it will hit uh, have no, they no, given no. us ab sir so? no 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 that's not how you should do it A to C is given. Can you use A to C? No idea. Okay, this so, projectile. So, so we can find the time uh, period for this projectile, and then uh, the it's like a drop after that vertical drop. Ah, uh, you're unnecessarily complicating it so much. Displacement in the y direction is given to us. Minus one twenty meters. Just use s equal to u t plus half a t square along y direction. U t plus half a t square along the y axis. S y u i a y. S y is minus one twenty. U i is uh, angle is given. So hundred sine thirty into t a y is minus ten. So it will be five into t square. You'll get the value of t for this much displacement c to a. So this is the answer for the first part. Everybody understood? Sir, we are just assuming that the ball passes just over c, right? Hey, wait, wait. Someone is experiencing lag. Now is it clear, Kritika? Yes, we are assuming that. What? Say it again. It passes over C, as in. So like. Uh... No, 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 Rajdeep. Raj, I think you got it wrong. See, what will happen is that definitely it will go up, and then come down vertically. This is what the motion is. Displacement is how much? In this formula, S Y is not the distance. It is displacement. Displacement is always this much only. No matter how much above it goes. Yes, sir, I got it. Come back. Okay, so uh, Rajdeep, the immediate feedback is revise uh, the projectile motion. Ha, huh, tell me. So don't this time from this equation don't we have add it to the total time like the time period for the projectile because this is just the time for the fall from C to A. There'll be two values. We I think we take the bigger one. Eric, I don't know why you're getting so much. No, this is this is it, that's all. Because you is going to be the answer. Okay. So there will be two times, right? One time. Whatever which... it is, there might be one value which is not even possible. It you might you may get t equal to minus something. Okay, forget about it. But why there is a confusion that uh, you will not get the answer for t when it goes from here to here? Vertical displacement is minus one twenty. When you put it, you will get the value of t. What is the problem in this equation? Yes, sir. I understand. Sorry. Okay, looks like uh, you guys have forgotten all the motion in two D stuff. Okay, and I don't know whether I should proceed discussing this question now. Sir, sir, I got my mistake. Okay, I'll just give a little bit of idea about the second part. The second cannon ball is fired. Assume resistive. Second cannon ball is fired after what time? At T naught. So by the time cannon ball goes and hit here, you'll get T naught from here. The car will move forward. So it moves forward by a distance of x, which is equal to five root three times T naught. This is the distance it will move forward. And again, I'm telling you, I'm not solving it completely. I'm just giving you hints. Okay, you have to solve it and put it on the group. Assume the resistive force between the rails and the carriage is constant. So there is a friction force which is constant, and it is non-impulsive. 
it keep on acting on it and it will decelerate the can uh, this uh, carriage velocity so what you have to do is first time it will go and hit here you need to conserve the momentum horizontally horizontal velocity is constant for the cannon so you will get the carriage velocity immediately after collision okay then again the second cannon ball will also take exactly same time because vertical displacement is again minus 120 only so in that time second cannon ball has to fall on the carriage fine but then carriage was decelerating but still you can conserve momentum just before and after collision horizontally because the frictional force is non impulsive it is it is a constant force of friction okay so now i have given you a lot of hints in this particular question so i want you to struggle through it get the answer and put it on the group who will uh, who will try it and put it today itself i'll try i'll try rucher pare rucher singh param who else i'll try sir pradyut try try i don't care whether it is right answer or wrong answer okay i do not care about right or wrong answer only thing i want is you guys struggling through it spend some time and do not look at the solution please don't if you look at the solution you are wasting a very good question you have wasted a good question you wasted your time you wasted uh, many things okay so struggle and even if you don't get it it is fine whatever you do just uh, you know suppose someone post the answer on the group you can discuss it out and you know, just discuss it on the group what how it can be done and what is wrong what is right all right why carriage is decelerating because uh, it is written na the carriage is experiencing force of friction where it is written uh, resistive force assume there is a resistive force between rails and the carriage it is written got it all right so that's it for today we'll meet next week with something new we'll do nuclear basically <laughs> all right bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir